All right, guys, so it is time for Puppin' Master 5, the final chapter is the tagline for this. So, thankfully, this is the last Puppet Master film. They never made any more after this, and I'm finally done with this franchise when this one is finished. So, let's start the final chapter, Puppet Master 5, from 1994. And by the way, Totems, that is the name for uh, My Little Demons. <laughs> They're called Totems. So from now on, we will abandon the My Little Demon name and we will call them by their proper term as Totems. They're still My Little Demons to me. Holy shit. We are opening with the Puppet Master theme for the first time since 2. 2? Yes, 2. Awesome. So we have Brian from the Breakfast Club, uh, scientist. Rick, his name is, his real name, if that is his real name. He's uh, back in this one. So it's like a little dual saga, four and five back to back. And he's being arrested for the murder of the two scientists at the beginning of the fourth movie. And... He says that he got his master's at 17. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm saying it's bullshit. When we saw what this guy's work consisted of in the last movie, fucking playing laser tag for like the entire movie. He got his master's at 17? Yeah, okay. Could we retire the saying, hold your horses? It's fucking 2022. No one rides horses anymore, like to get places. No one has horses, let alone that many horses that you have to hold them all. And you wouldn't even be able to hold a horse. A horse would kick your ass to the ground and take off running. So let's get rid of that whole saying. Perfect way to kick off five minutes into the movie is, let's see, some more clips from Puppet Master 4. See? When... Injected into the puppets, the elixir gives them life. So Blade, like I said in the last one, didn't need that shit one bit. So let's see how they're alive in this one. Or if they have to be injected with their jungle juice. Yeah, and good luck, Rick, explaining um, all that shit that happened in the last movie. Now that you got charged with murder. <laughs> yeah, the demon spawned from hell ended up coming up from uh, the underworld. And lifelike puppets that came to life ended up helping us defeat them. And that's how those people were killed. Guilty. Fucking 25 to life. I don't even think I brought this up in the last video, but <laughs> with this whole little clip show of the last uh, movie, the whole little scene of Toulon's face showing up on the body of a puppet looks ridiculous. <laughs> It looks so fucking stupid. So the um, Omega Project that Rick was working under bailed him out for two murders. I guess they're such a weird scientific organization. It's, I guess they can bail them out. But now he's trying to explain all this shit to like his higher up and it's not going well at all. Poor Blade is always being singled out. He was missing for most of part three. Now he got confiscated as evidence in this one. And now he just like knifed his way out of his evidence bag. And he's running around in the police station. Which again, as I've said in all of these, it's like a two and a half, three foot tall puppet running through a police station. Nobody notices. Because that's the shit that happens all the time. There was a weird, like, fast cut when Susie, the girlfriend of uh, Rex, came to pick him up, and they were making out in the police station, and then I looked away for two seconds and looked back, and his shirt's off, and I'm like, they're about to fuck in this police station, but it was like a fast cut to, like, their bedroom or something like that. It was pretty funny. And then he just falls asleep before they can fuck or do anything, so that was also funny. So the demon's back from the underworld so he's still down there and he was saying how in the up world which i thought was an interesting way 
to refer to, um, I guess that's, a, I guess actually it's a decent way of saying, uh, Earth or whatever, Upworld, I guess. They're the Underworld. They should be the above world, would be a little better, but up world isn't too bad. And I don't know why I was thinking of this, but why does that demon have such hard nipples? I don't know, just an observation. And there's only one room, apparently, in the underworld. Like, every time we see down there with the main demon, there's just one room they're in. After a while, if, if the underworld is like hell, or how hell's supposed to be, and it goes on forever and ever, you'd have to just be like, please fucking end my existence. I can't take anymore. Especially with just one room to roam around. There's got to be more to it, but we don't see any of it. Shady scientific business dealings. So Rick has fucked up dreams. <laughs> he had a dream of some girl naked in a bathtub of blood. With those little, like, wind them up like, little shark toy floating through the water, and, like, a scuba diver guy, <laughs> and Tunneler's drilling a, he a hole in her head, and Pinhead is holding her head still, and then she's like, the puppet master, come here, puppet master, and then he wakes up. So, he's fucked in the head. Side note, try Bounce Lasting Fresh, so you have less static in your laundry. We are back at the Bodega Bay Inn, and it is now a crime scene which makes perfect sense. So, the underworld demon has his own special totem that has jewels embedded in it and has a scepter. So that's cool. And in the meantime, the Meyer, I think his name is, the Myers is like Rick's higher up. He's breaking into the Bodega Bay Hotel with three stereotypical thugs <laughs> like one of them even like has he has a pair of glasses on so he kind of looks nerdy so they just threw a sweatshirt on him that says brooklyn across it it's so funny not myers jennings myers is the last name of rick so yeah apologies and for some reason jennings thinks all these puppets run on hydraulics Oh, and Blade hitched a ride home in Rick's bag. So now Rick knows that Blade is with him. His little friend, his favorite pal, his little puppet. He's the puppet master. But he ain't no Andre too long. He ain't no Weeble Wobble. And now also, let's keep in mind, this is only, I'm guessing, like a day or two after the last movie. So it makes sense that the puppets are still up and running around because... They were juiced. Again, Blade hasn't been juiced in who knows how long with the elixir, so doubt they're going to go into any more detail about it, but just figured that was uh, something to mention. Oh, and that's right, Lauren is still alive too, uh, the hot red, red-headed hot chick who's a channeler, and she's in the hospital and she just threw a fit, so she's still in play here. So Jennings and the three thugs, quote-unquote, are searching the hotel trying to find the puppets. And they even asked, they said, do you think they're dangerous? <laughs> and Jennings is like, absolutely not. If I was the murderer, then how would I ta reveal to you how I did it? He didn't say all that, but I can never not throw a uh, clue reference in there. This special totem has a cape also, so... Very special totem. He has a cape, jewels, and a scepter. Apparently the underworld demon isn't like the head honcho because he keeps saying our lord to the totem. So apparently he's not the head honcho here. There is somebody higher up on the uh, evil underworld food chain than this demon we keep seeing. And then the, the totem just throws the cape on the floor before he heads into the portal to the upworld. That's an ancient underworld c fucking cape. You know how much that's worth? You don't just toss that shit on the ground. It's not mint no more. Come on, guy. Some cool shots, though, on the inside of the, uh, of the hotel when they're, like, creeping through it trying to find the dolls. Some cool shots. 
So poor Mr. Black Thug ends up getting, uh, we still don't know what these totems do to these people because they don't show it. You just see blood flying everywhere. So I'm going to go with s just clawing him to death, clawed him to death. And there's some cool like tribal music playing, like the score was pretty cool in that scene. That was a cool scene actually, not too bad. But then his life force got sucked out of him like they were doing in the last movie, which I still don't really know what that does. But it happened. Has anybody ever bought someone a car for like Christmas or a birthday and actually tied a giant ribbon to the top of it? This has nothing to do with the movie, it's during one of the ads. But <laughs> I, I've seen it in movies and shit, but I've never seen it in real life. So I don't know if that's a thing. Well, let me know if you've ever done that, because I don't think anyone actually has. So the super totem, which is what I'm referring to it as, very cool, but every time I see it, now I'm just kind of pissed that the totem uh, puppet master figurine that I have isn't the super totem one. Didn't come with a scepter, didn't come with the awesome cape he just fucking deminted. Doesn't have jewels embedded in him. So now I'm just kind of envious that I never got the, uh, the super totem figurine back in the day. What are you going to do? Things things slip by. Talking to Pinhead like he's a dog. <laughs> One of the thugs that was just talking to Pinhead like he was a dog. He's like, oh, whoa, boy, calm down. He's like, you're one ugly little bastard. And Pinhead just cracks him in the fucking jaw. <laughs> that was funny. Second movie in a row now that Six Shooter has no guns in his hands. So, I don't know if he's been demoted. <laughs> if they just decided, sorry, you're a little too dangerous. We're going to have to take all your weapons away. Now all he can do is, like, answer questions. Like, how many are in the room? And he holds up, like, four hands. And like, <laughs> I guess that's all he's allowed to do now. They took away his uh, right to bear arms. And we're getting a ton of the main theme score throughout this movie so far. So I don't know. People might have bitched for the last two movies, like I have been, <laughs> that we didn't have the Puppet Master theme in the last one and barely in the third one. And they wanted it back because they are pumping this movie full of the main theme, which I'm not complaining. I don't know why Jester's head has to spin like just to turn the other direction. I don't know. On the figurine, you just go like that. So I don't know why it has to spin so many times. But he just fucking took a meat tenderizer and just smashed this guy in the nuts. <laughs> and then he proceeded to come in his pants like he does in all these fucking movies. Yes, yeah, so the totem is clawing them to death. Because now we finally actually saw it, like, up close. And that's how we lost a good old thug from Brooklyn. Rest in peace, my friend. Oh, and then his life force is sucked out of him. Which I still don't know what that does or anything. Or it, how it helps the underworld demon's plan to tech kill the people who has Toulon's secret. Or why the CGI looks so amazing. But it's the ambiguity that keeps us watching, isn't it? So Dr. Jennings just found the... Uh, clawed to death uh, Brooklyn thug on the floor so I'm sure he's eating his words about these things not being dangerous anymore even though technically it was the totem it wasn't the puppets but you know what I mean or maybe you don't what the fuck where did Torch come from he's here out of nowhere so Torch shows up just to get lasered <laughs> by the totem and flung down the stairs and six shooter has his all his guns in all his hands so i guess he was carrying them all with him and just like whipped him out like on the spot i don't know so lauren the channeler the hot redhead who's in the hospital still is communicating telepathically with rick and telling him to kill the beast says help me kill the beast and he found the formula on a computer somehow how'd he miss that last movie I don't know gotta say I'm actually enjoying this one a lot more than the last two and there's only 20 minutes left so <laughs> I don't know where all the time went with this movie so apparently it's not telepathically that Lauren's communicating with them <laughs> he's typing on the computer 
who is this? And she says, help me again, types on the computer. And he says, is this too long? And then, who is this? And then she types Lauren. So apparently she's just typing through the internet, but like with her mind, I guess. And they are going to have to use Decapitron again to save the day and kill the demon. Special Totem could just walk through fucking doors. Now also, let's not forget that Rick is out on bail for murder. <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to resolve itself because now he's just got two more dead bodies in this hotel. And probably two more by the end of this. So I don't see him getting away with these charges. He's probably going to get more. So I don't know how he's getting out of this shit. Yeah, after seeing what Blade just tried against the totem, they need fucking Decapitron or whatever the fuck his name is. He's like swinging his blade way in front of the totem like Michael Myers in Halloween 2 after he gets shot in the eyes and he's just swinging his fucking knife around with the knife sounds. And then he like does finally stab the totem but it goes right through him and then the totem like flies up into the, into the ceiling or some shit. Funny though. Uh-oh, the last remaining thug got in the infamous elevator from the first movie. I don't know why Decapitron just is brought to life by electricity. Because, I mean, he uses electricity against the totems. So maybe that's his thing. But he doesn't need injections for the elixir or anything like that. So I'll suspend disbelief. I mean, it, as we're already doing that to an ex extreme degree. But I'm just going to suspend disbelief and just say he doesn't need the elixir. He's just like a homemade crazy puppet that works on electricity. But then again, like I said, Blade doesn't need the elixir either. So who knows? And why not just keep Decapitron just like, just the way he is all the time? Just keep him revived with his little fucking helmet on. And then you wouldn't have to revive him every time shit hits the fan. Makes sense to me. That's what I would do. <laughs> Toulon's face on Decapitron's body again. So fucking funny. But uh, Toulon told them to just leave and that the puppets and him will take care of the demons and shit and to go while there's still time. And Dr. Jennings wants to take the puppets or at least just one of the puppets because he think it's, thinks it's the future of Omega and the project they've been working on forever. And... Fucking Rick just has no part in it. He said, no, this is the second time this happened within a week. So this all is happening within a week. So he doesn't want to take any of these puppets. He said, if you take one of these puppets, then the evil will hunt you down. So we know he's going to take one of these puppets. So burglar numero tres is muerto. So Jennings and Rick are beating the shit out of each other. And again... <laughs> Rick was charged with two counts of murder for murdering his two co-workers. He kind of doesn't want Jennings to die here because then this is a third co-worker and a higher up of his that's going to be dead. So it's just going to be another murder count. So again, I don't even think they're going to address any of this because I'm pretty sure the next movie has nothing to do with these characters at all. So they're just going to fucking just not explain any of this, how this ends, because he's going to fucking jail forever. I really want to know where the fuck Torch was hiding all week <laughs> until this movie, because he just appeared and he's here again, and now they're all ganging up on uh, Jennings, and they're about to torch the shit out of him. And yeah, Jennings is dead. I miss the leech woman. I love how every exterior shot of the Bodega Bay Hotel or Inn, whatever it's called, is the exact same shot, like, in all these movies. <laughs> it's fucking funny. I can't, man. Every time the fucking Decapitron's blank head turns into Toulon, it's just fucking hysterical. That's so funny. But apparently, Sutek is in their world now, and he's after the Puppet Master, which is Rick so now they have to band together as puppets and save the day. Let's see if they can actually do that because they don't seem to be on their A game like in this movie. 
Ooh, Decapitron got his crazy electrified helmet on. You know what that means. He's going to start shocking the shit out of this fucking uh, totem. Almost forgot the word. Almost went with my little demon. The stop motion in this one actually looks really good. Like, the puppets and the way they move and everything looks better than the last two movies. Like, for sure. Like, really cool how they uh, upped the uh, ante on that. So Super Totem was trying to summon his portal to get back home to the underworld, and then he can always come back, and Decapitron just sh starts shooting his electricity, and Jester doesn't have his mean face on, he has like his what the fuck's going on face, like the, ooh, that one, so then there's like this big explosion, and it looks like the dolls of the puppets are all fucked up and stuff, but... I think they finally killed Super Totem. Rick steps on Super Totem, who's apparently dead, and says, Sorry, your reservations have been cancelled. I am happy to report all of our puppet heroes are A-OK. -okay. And after the big explosion, Lauren wakes up in the hospital A-OK. -okay. And whatever the hell uh, Rick's girlfriend's name was again... And that top she's wearing here at the end? A-OK. -okay. <laughs> Too large face on the thing again. And Rick knows that they'll, he has his friends, the puppets there, to fight any further battles in the future with him. And we get the awesome theme music, and that's the end. So yeah, no, he's going to prison still, right? Like, <laughs> like no avoiding that. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that his storyline ends right here and there. So don't think we're ever hearing from uh, Rick again. But this was uh, this was a lot more fun than the last two, like, for sure. Had a lot more fun watching this, and it went by a lot quicker, which I don't know if they're, like, each one of these movies is shorter by, like, a minute or two. I wouldn't be surprised. But all in all, that was a fun watch at, three something in the morning but that is puppet master five the final chapter and thank god because too bad because they could have made a lot more movies following this one but you got to stop at some point right and five seems like a good number for the puppet master franchise so the final puppet master movie has been covered and too bad there's no more wherever you guys are from Hope you're having a good morning, good night, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.